Please be seated. Mr. Little, you may begin. May it please the court. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> Mr. Vassar, when we were visiting yesterday, I believe it was somewhat of an emotional day. Can you speak up a little bit? Yeah. I'm sorry. Thank you. It was somewhat of an emotional day yesterday. You were talking about being called a rogue employee and, and the effect that that had on you. Do you remember? Yes, sir. And that, I mean, being called a rogue employee by someone you worked with was painful, yes? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, Your Honor, may I approach the witness? Yes, you may. Um, I'm going to show Don't you talk to him on the way up, though. Just Of course. Okay. I'm going to show you what's already been marked and admitted as Exhibit AG-170. And Mr. Arroyo, if you could bring up Exhibit AG-170 to page Brickman 190, please. Mr. Vassar, are you at page Brickman 190? Yes, I am. <clears throat> Mr. Arroyo is getting there so the jury can follow along with us. While this document is moving, Mr. Vassar, you understand you were served with a series of subpoenas by the House Board of Managers um, and by the Senate and by the Attorney General Ken Paxton in connection with this impeachment, true? Yes. And in the course of responding to that impeachment, you performed a diligent search for all the materials, of course, that were responsive to the subpoena, true? Yes, sir. And you didn't produce this text thread that we are looking at here at page Brickman 190, true? Uh, I didn't have it. That's, that's correct. It was not produced. And you did not have it, sir, because you deleted it, correct? No, that's not correct. Why did you not have it? My phone, my personal phone, through which these messages were sent, had a retention policy of 30 days to align with the Office of the Attorney General's retention policy. And so those records were automatically expunged under that retention policy. And tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury whether you signed what is called a litigation hold in connection with the Nate Paul investigation at the Office of the Attorney General on October 15th of 2020. Yes. But you did not hold this text thread that related to that investigation, true? Uh, it did not occur to me to change the setting on my personal device, but I delivered my agency phone and laptop to Brett Webster before I was placed on investigative leave. So I presume that any information on those devices were maintained. So this text thread, <clears throat> your testimony here today is this was on your work phone, true? No, sir. This was on my personal phone. And I didn't consider changing the settings on my phone, my personal phone which were matching the OAG's retention policy on the, the work devices. And you would agree with me, of course, that these documents would be responsive to the litigation hold? Um, I would have to look at the litigation hold to recall what it said exactly. I remember signing it on October 15th, but I don't remember the exact uh, categories or nature of the documents that it had mentioned. Well, is anything related to Nate Paul, true? Uh, like I said, I, I'm happy to take a look at the document. I don't recall offhand if it was anything related to Nate Paul. That's fine. Let's take a look at this text thread. It begins on October 20, correct? Uh, that's right. Yes. And yesterday, uh, I believe you said that after you um, left the Attorney General's office, you had trouble finding work for six months. Is that right? Yes, sir. Do you know who Amanda Crawford is? Yes. Who is Amanda Crawford? She is the current director of the Department of Information Resources. And upon your leaving the Attorney General's office, Amanda Crawford offered you the position of general counsel at the Texas Department of Information Resources. True? I don't believe she offered me the job. I think she mentioned that there was a posting for the position. And 
Why did she mention it to you? So that you could apply? I, I, I presume so. I, you would have to ask her why she mentioned it to me. But you did, well, isn't it true that she mentioned it to you because she wanted you to apply and thought that you would get it? I believe that could be a, a reasonable conclusion. But you did not apply, correct? Um, I don't recall if I did or not. I, I don't believe I did. You did not want that job, did you? Um, I, I don't remember at the time what my thinking was about whether I wanted the job or not. And isn't it true that Lacey Mace also offered you a job to come with her to the state of Tennessee and work for the Attorney General's office? I don't recall that of any official job or anything like that. You don't recall any discussions with her about it? No, sir. All right. Let's take a look at this text thread here at Exhibit AG 170. Uh, it begins with a couple of, and you, you have to understand, these documents were produced by Blake Brickman, and it begins, and so everything in blue is Blake Brickman. Do you understand that on an iPhone? Uh, yes, sir. He's the producer, and so his phone shows up blue. Yes? Yes. There are a couple of uh, news articles at the top. There's a quote from one of the news articles, the third text. David Maxwell below that says, how true? And you, you liked the statement from the news article about the whistleblowers in the Houston Chronicle, correct? Yes, sir. And moving down through it, Blake Brickman posts another article from the Texas Tribune. And Lacey May says, cute picture, Blake. And you post, uh, it looks like, a Batman meme. Is that right? That's right. This is a very somber time. Yes? Uh, that was a, a lighthearted effort to resemble a picture of Mr. Brickman. Oh, that he looks like Batman? Okay. Um, Mr. I guess we'll see. <laughs> Mr. Vassar, um, after that, Mr. Brickman says, from 2014, pre-LASIK, Lacey Mace laughs. Ryan Bangert says, handsome man. And you post a link to Twitter and a, a tweet that was posted by Scott Braddock, true? Yes. All right, we're gonna jump ahead a little bit. I want you to, Mr. Arroyo, could you move us to page Brickman 198? And if you could join me there, Mr. Vassar. All right, um, and do you see that you made a text at 6.59 p.m. that evening? Oh, uh, I see the one. Uh, Against Amplify Credit Union? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Mr. Uh, Arroyo, could you highlight that text for me or bring it up in Zoom? It reads, Amplify Credit Union, which held notes on three poll-controlled properties and had planned to put them up for auction on Tuesday, August 4, halted its proceedings because of Paxton's opinion, Amplify CEO Kendall Garrison told the statesman. The opinion was provided to us by an attorney for world class that Monday, Garrison said. You, you posted that, correct? Yes, sir. But you didn't know if it was true or not, did you? No, I quoted it. That's a, a quote from the article that was circulating in the text. Yes, I understand, but you didn't know whether that was true, correct? No. Okay. Not at the time. I'm going to show you a document here. One second. Do you have any experience with bankruptcy law at all? No, sir. Do you know what the automatic stay is? No, sir. Throughout your practice, you've not encountered it in the least? No? I've, I've heard of an automatic stay, but I couldn't explain the, the consequences of it for you. Don't, you don't know what it means? I, I understand it to mean that if a petition for bankruptcy is filed, it creates an automatic stay of any proceedings potentially relating to a debt or a claim? Is that a, a sufficient description? It's actually really good. Um, it would also stop a foreclosure, right? Again, I, I'm not sure. I'm not a bankruptcy lawyer, so I'm, I wouldn't be able to say if it would stop it. Do you know what times of day on uh, the first Tuesday of the month 
foreclosures are required to occur under the property code? Um, noon sounds right, but I, I don't know for sure. Your Honor, may I approach the witness? Yes. I'm going to show you what's been marked as Exhibit AG 292. Mr. Vassar, have you ever seen Exhibit AG 292 before? No, sir. Can you tell at the top what time this document was filed? Uh, it says it was filed August 4th, 2020, entered the same date, uh, 1048. Um, I assume that's AM time. It doesn't have an indication. Yep. If I told you that August 4th, 2020 was the first Tuesday of the month, would you believe me? That sounds right. Let's go back to exhibit AG 170, which is this text thread here, if you would. Let's continue on. Blake Brickman responds to you. Mr. Royo, can you bring that back up for me? We're at page Brickman 198 for the ladies and gentlemen of the jury. And if you look, Mr. Arroyo, if you can zoom in on the blue text at the very bottom. Blake Brickman responds, obviously just a coincidence, right? LOL. And then he had the audacity to thank the office publicly at deputies meeting later that week for stopping foreclosure on individual homes. The man is a pathological liar. Do you see that? Yes, sir, I see okay. that. <clears throat> Next page. Mr. McCarty responds, all about the people. And David Maxwell responds, all about himself. Then there are a series of additional articles that are being um, posted to this group chat. Why are you on a group chat in October of 2020 anyway? Uh, we were all friends. We were all colleagues. Um, we all enjoyed working together. So this was just a, a group thread where we talked if you would, Mr. Arroyo, would you bring it forward to page Brickman 200? In the middle of the page. Um, Counselor, hold on one second. You're a little ahead of the. Oh, I am. Okay. It's up now. I want to be sure it's up for the jurors to read when you're quoting it. Thank you, Mr. Read President. It. Mr. Arroyo, if you could um, zoom in on Ryan Vassar's text at the middle of that page. I'm so, yes, Mr. Vassar, thank you. Um, not, not quite so close, Eric, if you would. Just ca capture those two texts from Ryan Vassar in the middle of the page, the one above that too. Thank you, Mr. Royal. Now, Mr. Vassar, you link to a tweet from Lauren McGaughy on, it looks like October 25, is that right? Um, I don't, yes, it's a link to a tweet. I don't see anything about an October date, but, uh, oh, you're talking about the date that it was sent. Yeah, it may be October 26, because yeah. we're on that same thread. Yeah, if it's, if it's chronologically just with the pages, the page before, Brickman 199, ends on 1026, so it could have been 1026 earlier in the day. And um, you write hashtag soul survivor. What does that mean? Um, I'm not sure if it was referring to the, the tweet that I was referencing. It, it could have been an indication that I was the last remaining whistleblower who was still employed by the office. I see. And if we can continue on in that thread, Mr. Arroyo, zoom in on the next three uh, texts in that thread, please. Mr. Arroyo, just right under the date stamp, if you would, please. Good man, thank you. All right. On October 26th at about 5.55 p.m., Ryan Bangert writes, yep. And Ryan Bangert writes, BW, that's Brent Webster, right? 
Yes, sir. BW just dropped by my office. And just to be clear for the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, hopefully everyone knows, but Brent Webster is the then current first assistant attorney general. True? Yes, sir. It says, Brent Webster just dropped by my office to inform me of an org chart change. I will no longer be overseeing special litigation because it will now report directly to him. And you respond, what a joke. Right? Yes, sir. And David Maxwell responds, that's a train wreck waiting to happen. Ryan Bangert says, let him have it. And Blake Brickman writes, he is a joke. Yes? Yes, sir. Let's continue to the next page. If you can give me, Mr. Arroyo, maybe the top, the gray text at the top, we'll go piece by piece. No, maybe the first six gray texts so we can just all see them together, if you could. Thank you. Ryan Banger says, it will run itself. My fear is that he will force them to do crazy expletive. Is that typically how Ryan Banger would talk? No, sir. Lacey Mace says, I find that absolutely hilarious. Darren McCarty says, perfect. I've been trying to figure out how to get Patrick and Disher to join my new law firm. Is Darren McCarty one of the so-called whistleblowers? Yes, sir. Has he filed a lawsuit with you? No, sir. Because he just got out of the OAG's office and hung out a shingle, it sounds like, right? That's my understanding. Okay. Ryan Banger says, maybe Aaron can help. I'm sure Patrick and Dish will love being managed by a failed prosecutor and a third-year lawyer. That's what Ryan Banger wrote about his coworkers. Yes? I'm sorry, say that again. Ryan Banger. That's what Ryan Banger wrote about his coworkers. Yes? His colleagues. Yes? Um, yes. Then there's a like from Ryan Bangert, and you write, Patrick and Dish will need to start using smaller words in their pleadings. That's what you wrote, right? Yes, sir. You're insulting your colleagues on this familiar group chat, yes? Among friends. Yes? It was a, a very... Object, not responsive. Would it show answer, yes or no? You are ins I'm sorry, I'll ask it again. You are insulting your colleagues on this group chat among friends. True? I wouldn't describe it as insulting. Witness will answer yes or no. The way that you phrased it, no, sir. What did you mean? That, who are, first of all, just tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, who are Patrick and Dish? Uh, Patrick Sweeten was in the Special Litigation Division and Todd Disher was also in the Special Litigation Division. And so I, I may want to make sure the jury understands the implication of what you're saying. The implication is that Patrick and, is it Todd? Yes, sir. Patrick and Todd are going to need to use smaller words because their new colleagues at the Attorney General's office wouldn't understand it if they use big words, right? That's the implication. That is, as they say, the joke, right? Yes, sir. You were being funny, right? Yes, sir. If we can move down to the remainder of the page, Mr. Arroyo. Blake Brickman says the agency is going to fall apart and that is one person's fault and one person only, KP, right? Um, yes, I see that. In point of fact, the agency did not fall apart, did it? I, I haven't followed it. I, I wouldn't know. Lacey Mace laughs and says, or she laughs at your joke. And she says, I would love to be a fly in the wall during the special lit meetings. Can you even imagine four laughing emojis, right? Yes, sir. And you deleted all these texts, I guess, by just a policy on your personal phone, true? Uh, the way that you phrased it, no, sir, I did not delete them. Well, you had, a, you had a setting on your phone that deleted them, yes? That's right. You didn't think they might be necessary or needed later, right? That's not true. You post a, a link to Amazon below that, and what is that link to? Uh, the title is a, a coloring book, it looks like. And the text below that says, from you, they might need some activities to keep the kids entertained, right? Yes, sir. You are suggesting, are you not, Mr. Vassar, that your 
colleagues, professional lawyers at the Office of Attorney General might need a, color, might need a coloring book to stay entertained? That's what you're suggesting? Uh, I would describe them as colleagues. I had no professional experience with them other than just the knowledge that they were new lawyers. You didn't have any experience with the people that you are saying that might need coloring books to keep themselves entertained at the Office of Attorney General. Is that true? That's correct. It was a joke. It was a joke. I believe earlier your testimony was that being called a rogue employee was very upsetting to you, right? Yes, sir. But this is how you talk about your coworkers. True? Again, it was lighthearted. It was among friends. It was not made public to millions of people. No one was ever supposed to see it, and certainly not the people of Texas who are watching this impeachment proceeding, right? No one was ever supposed to see this. No one was, was, it was hiding private. it. I'm sorry. It was private, right? Well, it was, it was a conversation among friends, but I wouldn't say that any of us are concerned that it's being discussed here today. Are you proud of this? No, sir. That's not what I said. No, I, I'm asking you now. Are you proud of this? No, no sir. Let's turn the page. If you could give me uh, all the gray ones at the top, Mr. Arroyo, or just the first six texts so we can see it in context. Lacey Mace says, ha, 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 in response to your text, and David Maxwell posts a laughing emoji, right? This is, everybody's joking, having a good time on this text thread, right? Sure. Nobody's appreciating the somber moment of being FBI whistleblowers, at, at, at least at this time on October 26, right? Well, we had all been through a lot by that point, and I suppose people process things in different ways. Gallows humor, perhaps, right? Yes, sir. Okay. David, Max, David Maxwell says, my phone conference with Margaret Moore and her team went well, well today. They are excited about pursuing this investigation and will coordinate their efforts with the U.S. Attorney's Office so that both pursuits complement each other. Who's Margaret Moore? Uh, she was the previous Travis County District Attorney. So David Maxwell is calling the Travis County District Attorney at the time and the U.S. Attorney's Office, and everybody is getting fired up. They're getting excited about prosecuting Ken Paxton, right? Uh, that appears to be what he is saying. <clears throat> Next sentence says, they obviously want to move quickly as they have time constraints. They are not going to wait on the feds. What does that mean? Uh, you'd have to ask Director Maxwell. I'm not sure what that means. What do you think it means? Um, objection, objection to him being asked to speculate what it means, Your Honor. Good objection. He, he, doesn't would, know, he doesn't know. Sustained. Thank you. I would draw it. Now, <clears throat> If you look down in the rest of the thread, it says, so you know, this is Ryan Banger, so you know I tender my resignation today, effective November 4th. Darren McCarty says, thanks for letting us know. David Maxwell says, no, I didn't, just got done at FBI, went great. I'm staying until he fires me. We'll keep y'all post on progress, right? Uh, yes, sir, I see that. At this time, are you hoping to retain your job? Yes, sir. I was still on investigative leave at the time. Yes, and you're hoping to retain your job? Yes, sir. And ultimately, you came back to the office and talked to Brent Webster, yes? That's right. And you said to Brent Webster in that meeting that you still trusted the Attorney General, correct? Uh, I believe so. I, I don't recall exactly what I said to Mr. Webster about trusting the Attorney General. I think what Mr. Webster asked. Can you hold for a moment? We'll stand at ease for uh, 30 minutes. Yes, Your Honor. 